super strong. It's raining, we're trying to hurry. Minimalist platform bed. Frankly. It's got wood glue and spec screws and brackets. She's a beauty. Hi, welcome to Our Family Beat. I'm Brandon. I'm Brigitte, and today we're going to take you along to show you the process of how we made, well, this guy made, a beautiful, affordable, minimalist, platform bed. He has made so many pieces of furniture in our house and for very cheap. The total cost of materials for this bed that you can do on your own with very few tools was under $170 going to our local Home Depot. Now that might be a little more or less in your area but should be in the ballpark. It's super strong. It works for anybody. You'll be safe sleeping on this and it leaves seven inches underneath it which is plenty to slide a six inch tall low profile tote that lots of folks use under their beds in and out with no problem. We made this for our friend Emily, so she's in this video and you'll see her helping out a bit. Let's go. You don't need anything crazy. Like Southern Yellow Pine, super strong for what we're doing. The problem is, it is supposed to rain all day and I'm working on this on a patio under like a tarp thing. It is gloomy, folks. Gloomy. on the inside of bed and hold the, the slats. Yeah, that'll be good. I love it, there's so much. Overkill. I think we got all the breakfast. It's a thing. Oh, nothing. Just charge a lot more money. Three quarters should probably be fine. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. We're trying to hurry. things as we're about to get started here. If you're shopping for wood and you need to build something that needs to be straight in any way, shape, or form, be careful when you're buying the wood. So if you're buying lumber especially, check that your boards are straight. The way you do that is this. First, don't have a mask over your mouth when you're recording. That's point one. Then take the board and hold it like this and look straight down it and you'll be able to see looking down the edge of the board whether or not it's straight. You see this one is pretty straight all the way down to the end. It's slight bow at the end, but that's pretty good there. Then turn it and look down this way. And you'll see here too, pretty straight all the way down. Now you might find that sometimes there's some cupping in the board or bowing this way. You also might find a lot of warping. Now sometimes it's okay if right at the end or one side or the other, it's got a little warp. You can cut it off if you don't need the whole piece anyway, that's fine. But Try to get, be picky about your boards. Make sure they are as straight as you can get them. So I'm gonna get started here. It might rain soon and I need to mark these boards and cut them as fast as I can. Let's go. Okay, so now that you've seen a little bit of who we are and what we can do, I think you should subscribe right now. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the all button on the notifications so you don't miss any video we have coming out, which is every Tuesday and Friday. Also, come join the family on Instagram at OFB Social because we love seeing your faces over there. You are our community. You're our squad, our family, our... We need a name still. Any ideas? And listen, you should really check out our new website, OurFamilyBee.com. We have so many resources and cool things over there. So you know what? After this video, go ahead over there. And you know what? Sign up for our newsletter at the very, very bottom. Scroll all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Put in your name and email, and we're going to send you something. Not today. Soon. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button to show us you like this video. I mean, DIY projects, who doesn't like those? Okay, let's get back to the video. Let's 
Let's jump right in with our cut list for the project. You will need number one, four eight foot two by eights. These are the head, the foot, and the side rails for this bed. You'll also need two eight foot two by fours, one for the center rail to hold the slats up, and another one to help make the feet. Number three, you're gonna need two eight foot two by twos. These are for the slat holding rails on the inside of the side pieces of the frame. And you're gonna use these for the feet as well. Number four, you're gonna need 12 or 13 six foot one by fours to use as slats. Our first big cuts are gonna be cutting the foot and the head, which are both cut to five foot one or 61 inches. And then the side rails, which are both cut to exactly seven feet or 84 inches. Stay hydrated, people. Starting to cut the legs and originally had way too much of an overcomplicated design, I changed it. When you're cutting a lot of pieces the same size, cut the original one, make sure it's exactly where you want it, and then use it as a template. That way every piece coming after is exactly the same. Remember when I said overcomplicated? That. Yeah, that's too much. Instead, we're just gonna make a basic L shape. And here, Emily has come out and she has helped me to do that. So we're just gluing together two by twos and two by fours that are cut exactly to seven and a quarter inches and throwing a couple screws in there to hold. Make sure that everything is really, really flush when you clamp it together to glue and screw it. Now we're attaching the side rails. You want these to be exactly two inches from the bottom of the edge of each side piece. You want to glue them on and put screws in, in a line about every six to eight inches at minimum. We're using two inch spack screws. They kind of drill their own hole. And now you're going to sand everything that is ever going to be touched by fingers outside of moving time. So first go over everything with a 100 or 120 grit. This is going to be your rough sand and it's going to make things just a little better. Smooth out the crazy stuff, take off any of the stamps that are left on from the mill where the wood was cut originally. You're then going to switch to a 220 grit. Now this is going to be a bit of a long process, especially if you're doing it manually, but better to do it well. And now we present to you a baby and a wife. Try to sand. <laughs> well, it's not raining, it's sprinkling. Yeah. yeah. What's sprinkling? So it's like raining really lightly. It's really slow? Yeah. Mom, you fix my packages. Can you fix my packages, please, Mom? What? No, I put them over there so that we could stand over there to watch. I'm popping out to say hi, and Emily's pointing to this water collecting on our sun sail. Brandon apparently thinks it's going to be funny to just let it pour all over. Getting close to the bed there, Brandon. Bracket. Works nice, eh? That's handy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice bracket. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think the bed's almost complete? It's got wood glue and spack screws and brackets. <laughs> if you're building the bed this way, you want to lay all the pieces out once all the sanding's done and make sure they fit. And I would normally do this from the feet up. The thing is, we have to make sure that with these brackets, which really are a great idea for this, that this seats well on the framing when the feet are in. So, this also helps though, with making sure you've got a right angle. Line up your brackets with the corners and they automatically give you a pretty close right angle. Now you're not done, you're still gonna wanna use a square for this to make sure they're at right angles, but it helps a lot. Hmm. What bracket you had, buddy? I had it, Daddy had it. Daddy had it! Dude, you have it. It's right here behind you where Emily had it. <laughs> no, I had it. No, I got yours, bud. That's pretty good. Now. Let me go get a tape measure and a square so I can show how you do trick. 
when you're squaring up anything that needs to have right angles on it, you can use this and this is super helpful. But this is more helpful for smaller things. This is 60 by 80 inches roughly, uh, which, you know, over the course of all that length, the angle can spread out a little bit. So yes, check it with the square. And look, that looks really, really good actually. I, I know, I agree entirely. But also check it with the tape measure. You can hold this on right there in that corner. Can you hold it still? Oh, yeah. So check corner to corner. So this is 106 and 1 16th inches. Now, if it's perfectly square, the other angle that intersects it will be the same because that's one of the properties of a parallelogram. So 106, and this is actually shorter, which means we've got to twist it a bit. So let me do this a little bit. And some of this. Okay, let's do it again. And I get 105 and, an, and 5 eighths. And take it over there. And I get outside corner, 106 and a half. It's not right. Oh, that's why the pieces aren't together. Perfect, like legit perfect. Well, like a 30 second of an inch off over the course of seven feet. So once you've measured it and it's wrong, and it probably will be, get it all in the right place. If they're within like a 30 second of an inch of each other, you're fine. Lift this up and set it on there, okay? Wait, well, look at that there, man. Come over here, you can see what it looked like. Come on. One. One screw. Ah, ah, ah. There we These go. These are corner clamps from Harbor Freight. You don't absolutely have to have them for this. They do help with a right angle, but the straighter your wood, the less you need them. All right. Good, good, we leave that clamp for now. Grab a slat and make sure it fits across perfectly. You should have like literally an eighth inch of clearance on, the, on each side. <laughs> That's gorgeous. A quarter inch maybe? Yeah, I did a quarter inch on each side. You like that? Yeah. Perfect. Using brackets to put this together, you are gonna need a lot of screws. They're specifically three quarter inch lath screws. You can use the cheap ones. You don't need the expensive things, but it's okay. Just put screws in all the holes and you'll be fine. Nope. See, and now it stays. You're also gonna be drilling holes for drywall screws, one on each side corner. So first, a 3 8 inch bit for about a 3 8 inch depth, then a bit just slightly smaller than your screw, about two inches deep, and then your screws will go straight in. It's a bed! And super important not to forget are these brackets that hang the centerpiece. See Emily screwing it on in her house. Make sure you put those exactly on center, flush with the bottom, and they're able to set fine. Look at that bed, people. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it lets us know that you like this content. And you know what? If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And if you want to see another DIY on how I made our family command center board to organize all the craziness in our life, then go ahead and check out the cards right here or in the description box down below. And check out our website, OurFamilyBee.com, to check out everything we've got going on. You can check out our merch store, see our blog, and actually see all the instructions for how to put this bed together. And when you get there, scroll all the way down to the bottom and subscribe to the newsletter because that's how we're going to continue to grow this community outside of YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the button right here. And if you want to see more videos by us, check them out over here. Until we meet again, don't forget, life, life is, is better, better together. together. That was good. We did a thing. <laughs>